Police Post Secretary for Foreign, Affair, for Foreign and Diaspora Affairs, Bruce Jogu, the new High Commissioner to Rwanda, Basita Janet Oben, officials of the Association of Kenyans here in Rwanda, honorable members of Parliament, Kenya and Zalwam Jambo. God is good. And all the time. Kenya hoy. Hoy. Wa Kenya mpo? Mpo. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy Easter. Habari ya kungangana? Hata sisi tuangangana. Um I'm happy to join you today on this engagement in honor of our diaspora based in Rwanda. This platform presents an opportunity for us to have conversations that touch the core of government's agenda, listening to our people and availing opportunities to them. I bring greetings from President William Ruto, who has sent me here to represent him in the 30th commemoration of the 1994 genocide scheduled for tomorrow. And as such, I committed to having a discussion with fellow Kenyans living, working and studying here in Rwanda, which is a deliberate policy of our government. And that is why President William Ruto, on ascending to the high office, and on forming government, decided to create a full-fledged State Department of Diaspora Affairs so that we can have this engagement and appointed our very able principal secretary who's in Jogu to head that particular State Department. Before I say a few things so that we can have an engagement, the government of Kenya led by President William Ruto is a government of engagement, continuous engagement. The President and I are very deliberate in engaging Kenyans because we don't know everything. In fact, we know very little. The President tells us, and we agree, that a good idea should give room to a better idea and a better idea ultimately must give room to the best idea. This can only be done when people engage. We like to do more listening and less talking. And I'll therefore be inviting you for a discussion. But before I do that, let me introduce the Kenyan delegation that has accompanied me here so that you know who is in the house. To start with is our PS for Diaspora Affairs, Rosalind Jogu. Please stand up and wave. Begin here, coffee. Thank you, yes. We have the Honorable Owen Bayer, the Deputy Leader of the Majority in Parliament and the Member of Parliament for Kilifi North and our political kingpin in the Kilifi County. We also have Senator Veronica Miner, nominated Senator from Rana and formerly the Secretary General of UDA party, the ruling party. We have the Honorable Patrick Munene, the Member of Parliament for Chuka in Abangombe, and the Vice Chairman of the Health Committee in the National Assembly. We have the Honorable Julius Ruto, the Honorable Member for Kases, Lucian Gishu County, Yeni Makoff. We have the Honorable Parashina Samuel, the Honorable Member for Kajiado South, that is Loitoktok, Mutiapale Kompaka. Muone Kado and Ajua Mabuming, what will I see Kompaka and Ajua Mabuming? We have the Honorable John Kabushia, the Member of Parliament for Mukroene in Yeri House. 
We have the Honorable Abbasinda, Benjamin Langat, the Member of Parliament for Ayanamoy Constituency in Kericho County. We have the Iron Lady of Narok, the Honorable Pareo Agnes, the Member of Parliament for Narok North, Mama Wangufu San. We have the Honorable Charles Kanye, a.k.a. Jaguar, the former <laughs> member of parliament for Starehe, he of the Kigeugeu fame. <laughs> I also, in the course of duty, have been giving public lectures in our public universities to mentor our young people. And in the process, I invited some leaders from two universities to come with me so that they get exposure and get to know the world. I have Justice, Justice Jambani, a student leader from Rana University. And I have uh, Francis Mwangi, a student leader from Pwani University. Uh, from the onset, I wish to mention that the Kenya Kwanzaa government has a vision for the diaspora which is to bring you to the center of our policy, programs, and initiatives beyond the discourse of remittances. As a government, the security and safety of all citizens in our foremost com is our foremost commitment and most fundamental obligation. Uh, that is why I stand here proud to see you all and to confirm government's deliberate efforts to provide structures and systems that protect your welfare and rights and also to work with you and support you to harness the immense potential of Kenyans in the diaspora for the socio-economic development of our great country. I can also confirm that the government has expanded digital provision of public services to encompass 14,000 services and it is our commitment to ensure full digitization, which has not only enhanced efficiency and integrity in the provision of efficiency, uh, in the provision of government services, but also improved revenue collection. In addition, some of these services have been taken closer to the diaspora through the mobile consular service exercise that we rolled out and has now covered 22 countries and served over 9,000 Kenya support. The State Department of Diaspora Affairs is currently implementing Phase 3 of the MCS and I'm aware that the team was here in Rwanda last week and I believe you are served well and I have noted your request that they come back for another four days. So PS, you are directed to make sure that they not only come for four days but a full week. I am also aware because I make it my business to know what goes around. That when they were here, there were a few challenges on the, net, on the network with Kenya. And some of you made payments and have not received the services. And I've already directed the PS to make sure that those who make payments are served promptly so that you enjoy the service. <laughs> and uh, our PS is very proactive. I'm sure she'll do exactly that. Government has also developed the global labor market strategy that will facilitate the securing of jobs for our citizens abroad. This strategy is part of the interventions to create safe migration pathways for our people. Our target is to have this skilled human capital secure job opportunities abroad, especially the youth who are creative, innovative, skilled, and ready to explore the world as they work. Indeed, as I walked in, I came through an exhibition display by our Kenyan people. And the level of creativity and innovation is on another level. Kenyans are great people. We know sometimes being away from home is challenging. But I know Kenyans, we Kenyans are lesbians, and I want to implore you to come together to share experiences offer guidance and provide mutual assistance and support 
each other. That is why I didn't want to upload the official organization of Kenyans in Rwanda for bringing our people together to network, to comfort <coughs> each other, to watch each other's back, and always be there for each other. Because when you are away from home, you need Kenyans around you. So I want to encourage you to continue strengthening the association of Kenyans living here in Rwanda. And uh, I want to really encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, to continue strengthening your organization. As a country, we have entered a phase of economic transformation where opportunities abound in every sector and we encourage you to size your chance and reap a rich yield. As the diaspora, your reputation as Kenyans in Rwanda is well, as hard work, innovation and commitment to excellence have not only propelled your personal success, but have also made a positive impact in the companies and organizations you are in. In fact, the last time I was here, I paid a courtesy call President Kagame, and he was full of praise for the Kenyans who are here because he said they are very well behaved and they are law-abiding and they are good people. So, please continue. Although a few who I have told are in prison and you want them to come back home. <laughs> I want to discourage Kenyans going to prison. If they can avoid it, of course, uh, in every society there are deviants. And there will be a challenge here and there, and I think we will be able to respond to that request. Where those who find themselves on the bad side of the law, unfortunately, and it's something we want to discourage, probably we can work out an arrangement where they can come and serve their sentences back home. But overall, we want to encourage you to obey the laws of this land, to avoid getting in trouble, to avoid being arrested, to avoid being taken to court, and if possible, to avoid going to prison. Prison is not a very good place because it's denial of liberty and uh, it's very humiliating and very discomforting. So let's try as much as possible, to the extent possible, to observe the laws of this land so that we are on the right side of the law. Um, as, as I engage with the leadership of your host country from tomorrow, I have no doubt that we have a good name here. I hear positive stories about our people and the good relations between Kenya and Rwanda. Therefore, let us build on the positive stories and relations to work together to create and harness opportunities for all, ensuring that the benefits of our collective efforts reach every corner of our nation and to every Kenyan citizen, wherever they may be. This is the spirit of our bottom-up economic transformation agenda better. In this regard, I call on you to join us in focusing on key sectors that are integral to our nation's development as well as, as offer promising opportunities for investment, mainly in the better priority areas of agricultural transformation, micro, small, medium enterprises, housing and settlement, the healthcare program, digital superhighway and the creative economy. We are keen to work with you to harness your networks in order to channel both investment opportunities and knowledge and technology transfer that will make our economy thrive and move Kenya forward. In conclusion, you, the Kenyan diaspora, play such a crucial part of decolonizing, democratizing, and globalizing our economy. Your commitment and contributions are invaluable, and I'm confident that together, will shape a brighter future for Kenya. As Antony Sana. Uh, those were the official comments of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. <laughs> Let me now speak a few things as Rigiji. <laughs> One. <laughs> uh, I want to take this opportunity on behalf of President William Ruto to bring you to speed to what is happening back home. Kenya is great again. 
First and foremost, we do have political stability. And uh, everybody now is busy. Politics are down. <laughs> there is no mandamano. <laughs> and we are back to the right trajectory in terms of economic development. That is political stability. Again, in Kenya now, there is political tolerance. Everybody is allowed to say what you want. Criticize the president. Abuse him if you must. <laughs> Criticize the deputy president. Even say he has not gone to school. <laughs> say whatever you want to say. But don't break the law. Don't destroy people's property. And respect the rights of others to have different views. Again, there is transparency and accountability. Ours is an open government. We are an open book. Our cabinet secretaries go to parliament every week to answer questions on the floor of the house on what they are doing in their ministries. And they are taken to task by members of the National Assembly and the Senate. And the president is clear, answer all the questions. Our government is ready to be oversighted, to be corrected, and to be criticized in a constructive manner. In fact, the National Assembly is processing a recommendation by the president to have the official opposition leader anchored in law so that the leader of official opposition can go to parliament and hold the government to account from a dignified position instead of going to the streets. <laughs> give him vehicles, give him researchers, and enable that office because oversight is good for any government. We don't want a dictatorship. We want to be held to account. Again, Kenya is today a country of the rule of law and constitutionalism. Our courts have stopped our programs and we have obeyed the law. They threw out the housing fund. We accepted and whatever they said, we went to parliament and corrected. The issues of extrajudicial killings that were there before we came to office are a thing of the past. If anybody has committed a crime, one must go through due process, go to a court of law, be tried in an open court, be heard before a determination is made. Kenya today is a democratic, free country, and any Kenyan has a right to say and do what you want, provided you don't break the law. I want to bring you to speed that in a record one and a half years, Kenya's security has never been as good. For the last one year, one and a half years, not a single act of terrorism that has been committed in Kenya because of prudent intelligence collection, sharing of intelligence, and being proactive in making sure that acts of terror do not take place anywhere in our soil. Issues of bank robberies are a thing of the past. Carjackings are a thing of the past. Muggings are things of the past. What we have are simple things of men fighting women, <laughs> which is an old thing, and we cannot do anything about it. A few domestic quarrels here and there, a few petty thieves, some people borrowing money and refusing to pay, <laughs> others conning others, even some of you have been conned 
you send money home, somebody says they are building a house for you, they take the photograph of the neighbor's house and they say it is yours. Those are normal petty crimes that are taking place in Kenya. They are called misdemeanors. But in terms of felonies, we have a very able interior cabinet secretary, Professor Kithure Kindiki. The issues of budgetary in North Rift have been contained to a large extent. The insecurity in Lamu has been addressed. Insecurity in Laikipia has been addressed. Kenya has never been more secure. And that will continue so that people live in peace. So that we create the right atmosphere for economic development. And we create a good environment to attract investment and tourism. Again, in one and a half years, President William Ruto had a very prudent management of economic transformation, getting the right advice, consulting, reaching out, thinking through, putting a lot of hard work. The economy is showing great and visible signs of recovery. The dollar that was a hundred at 66 shillings is now below 130. The Kenyan shilling is strong. <laughs> when we came in on August 13, 2022, the price of unga, the staple food in Kenya, was 240 shillings. Through prudent management and subsidization of production as opposed to consumption, bringing down the cost of production. The cost of Wunga has come down to 120 shillings and the food security for the Kenyan people is secure. There is enough food for everybody. Again, we have employed 56,000 teachers to bridge the deficit that was there in terms of teacher-pupil ratio. Things are looking very bright. And I want to assure you, they will even get better. And we are on the right trajectory in terms of economic transformation. And the programs that the president has put in place are ongoing. And things will continue improving. We have the affordable housing program that should interest you. East or west? East or west? You are not going to live here forever. I know you are very happy. I can see the way you are smiling. I think you are doing well. <laughs> and you should do it well. It's good. We are happy when you see you happy. But one day you shall come back home. Please invest in affordable housing. Put some money aside. The houses are not expensive. The mortgage is quite cheap. Five, six thousand shillings a month. You get a nice three bedroom house in Pangani, in Stare. And when you do retire and come back home, you don't have to go and start looking for the landlord. You'll then be an old man or woman of 60 years. You have no business talking to a landlord at that age. Buy yourself a nice flat in Nairobi. Rent it. Be collecting the rent. And since most of you don't need it, give it to your father or mother when you are still here. But when you come home, have somewhere in the city of Nairobi, in the city of Nakuru, the city of Kisumu, that you call home. I want to invite you to make a deliberate decision to invest in affordable housing. Through the embassy, we'll channel information on how you apply Bomayangu so that you can invest in that scheme, which is very reasonable. Actually, you will not feel it. Within 10, 15 years, you own a house in Nairobi, in Nakuru, in Nyeri, in Embu, in Kisumu, in Mombasa. I would like to interest you. I also want to report to you that um, 
despite the fact that we had the worst drought in 40 years, after five failed successive seasons, not a single Kenyan died for the first time since drought became a problem in our country. The government and development partners were able to make the right interventions and not a single Kenyan died. Again, we lost a few people in El Nino. Not because the government didn't do much, but we also have many people who dare nature. <laughs> people find a river, it is so rough. They can see vehicles being carried down stream and they still want to cross. So we lost a few people. But overall, the intervention was very efficient. And uh, it's important that I inform you what's happening in the country. Again, we have changed the culture of savings. Many people save all over the world. Kenyans, we have not been saving because we had a very um, ill-thought program. NSSF, the payments was 200 shillings per month. If you saved for 30 years, you would only save 72,000. I don't think anybody can live for 72,000 after working for 30 years. So we have made some changes in the law and now Kenyans are saving. And what we want to do that is that when we borrow money from outside Kenya, we borrow money from the savings of the people of those country. We want to borrow money from our own savings so that the interest can benefit our own people. Why should the interest that we pay on loans benefit foreigners when we can have our own savings and be able to uh, pay that interest to the Kenyan people? Again, in terms of international engagements, Kenya has never been in a better position. In one and a half years only as president, President William Ruto, he was a chicken seller, the son of a person from a small village called Sugoi. Today is the darling of the world. He is invited to every capital that if you allowed him to go, he would have to leave me acting for five years. <laughs> so he's going once in a while. But the world is seeking him out. In Matas, Africa, he hosted the Africa Climate Summit. It was such a huge success that his leadership role now in Africa cannot be questioned. He's truly now the real leader of this African continent. He's been to every capital in the world, from Tokyo to Brussels, to Paris, to everywhere. In fact, just being one and a half years in office, he has achieved something that many presidents have not achieved. He has been invited for a state visit to the United States of America on May 22 this year. That is next month. That shows the acceptance of the Kenyan leadership by the international community. And as a result, many interventions have been made. IMF is listening to us. The World Bank is listening to us. World giants like China are listening to us. France is listening to us. And the president's diplomatic um, approach is paying huge dividends. And the state visit to the US in May around May 22nd, 23rd, will be a very clear signal to the rest of the world that Kenya is around and is a country that can no longer be ignored. And that is good for our country. So I just wanted to give you hope and tell you, Mambo Zimbaya, Bele Ikosawa, Tukosawa. And uh, the people of Kenya went to the ballot and we are persuaded as a country that we made the right decision. We elected a president who seems to know what he's doing. And our work as his principal assistant, all these other officers, our work is to support him in the ma management of the affairs of our great country. Uh, I want to 
respond to a few things that you ask, and then we can open the floor. And I told these members of parliament to assist me in answering your questions, because they are leaders. And they are not here on holiday or to as tourists, they are here for work. <laughs> so I was watching my meaning and my swally peke yango. See you? But what is the idea? Sasa wa melipiwa kuja hapa na serikali. Sasa lazima wafanye kazi. I want to say that uh, the issue of double taxation is normally misunderstood. Actually, it's very clear. Our laws are very clear that uh, there is no double taxation. What you do is very simple. Once you pay your taxes here, file the same with us, with the KRA, so that we have the record that you have paid, and then nobody will tax you again. It is that simple. And I think we'll uh, ask KRA and the National Treasury to give the right information to the embassy here, the mission, so that it is given to you, so that you know exactly how to go about it so that we don't uh, get worried again that you can be asked to pay tax twice. Once you are paid tax here, that should be about it. And that is something that uh, will, will, will create more, more information so that uh, that information can help you. Again, uh, you have raised the issue of pension fund that it stays here and then you need it. I think uh, our new Balos here, very strong lady, and uh, I'm happy that she has started well. And when the president sent her here is because of his acknowledgement of the importance of Kigali and our relationship as a country. And we needed to send somebody here who is sharp available and engaging. I think this is something in our discussions with the Rwandese government, uh, but also we continue discussing how we can create a framework because it's doable. Please work on it. Again, the issue of the prisoner exchange program, although I want to discourage us from going to prison. Let's try as much as possible. <laughs> Simulize mimi. Ya mimi nilikuwa nashika shiku kila wakati. Siku mbili, tatu, ine, namna hii, mimi nangangana natoka, naingia, narudi. Lakini sasa niko hapa. So let's avoid but let's work on it. Again on the waiver, uh, the way you have explained, let's also Balos will work on it. The consular services, I have said the PS will send people here to come and complete what they did not uh, complete so that we can uh, get better. Again, on the, uh, the plot limitation, on the reciprocity of uh, property rights, again, that is something we'll discuss here with the Balozi so that they work on it. And, uh, of course, the issue of love and marriage, the one PS has talked about here, is good, love is sweet. Please marry these girls here. <laughs> no problem. Lakini watoto ni wetu. Sindio? Watu wa wane. Hakuna shida. Hiko makosa gani? If you get a nice beautiful girl, loving, caring, hard working, weka kwa box, pideka nyumbani. <laughs> so I think, uh, peers, we have a responsibility to help these people marry. Pia wale watataka kuolewa hapa sawa lakini watoto ni wetu <laughs> so there's no problem because this Africa the president has created a visa free regime especially for this continent we are one people we are all black people we have one history so when the people of Rwanda murder the people of Kenya and they get children, it's good. It improves our relations. So I want to encourage you. And it's something as a government we want to encourage. So we will make it easy for you to process your marriages and certificates and all that so that we enable you to consummate your marriages and to dignify love and relationship. 
hii maneno ya come and stay hatutaki because inaleta hasara so that is something i think we'll be able to work on uh, chairman you have said that you have a program for young mothers you want some sewing machines i'll give you 500000 those are 25 machines i will get help I can give you in Kenya shilling or in dollars whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> so utani utaniambia. Uh, francs we don't have. Uh, so I mimi wacha niseme namna hii nikimalizia. I'm very proud as a Kenyan to meet Kenyans. Um Kenya is a great country. It's a country that we love. It's a country that we cherish. That is why when I travel I like meeting Kenyans because you feel nice to see your people. Tani miona mwingine hapa akisema ni ya udhaya ndio ationekana yako karibu sana na mimi. That is how we as Kenyans love each other. You know you want to see somebody you feel hii ni mtu wa kwetu, si ndio? Unasikia mzuri. So last time tulikutana pale kwa nyama choma. I'm so disappointed as gear tilifungwa. What happened? Is it still operating? Bas, waheshimiwa sasa mtajua kama tutaenda huko. Pato. Lakini muziende kukunywa ile kitu kingine. Sababu nyama peke yake. <laughs> eh? Sawa. <laughs> so I we had a very nice nyama choma session there. It was not this formal but it was very interactive. Hata huyu mzee wa nyumba 10 anasema I promise him something. Utanikumbusha hata siwezi kumbuka. Kama nilisema nitafanya. Yeah? Si ndio? Bora usiniambie urudi nyumbani nataka uketi hapa. Usikuje kule. Umewa hapa. Pa- pale tume pale tumeshikana kidogo. Kae kae ni hapa kidogo. <laughs> Mkae kae hapa kidogo. Mkipata pesa mnatuma huko. For now, alafu miaka ikienda ndio mtarudi. Lakini for now, pale tumejaa. Mkae kae hapa. <laughs> so finally, the only challenge that we are having in Kenya is drug and substance abuse. I hope you don't have this problem here, especially among the Kenyan people. Pale for the last 10 years people are producing poison labeling it alcohol and selling it to our children who are losing an entire generation vijana wetu walikuwa wamekuwa bure wanalala kwa mitaro wamekunywa pombe wamekwisha transformer zote zimesimika hmm? Fika pale kijana ameoa juzi ameoa msichana mrembo mrembo amelala kwa kitanda kijana analala chini ya kitanda That's the situation we are having so as a government we have become extremely rough on those characters we have shut down all those factories and distilleries we have vetted them and out of 56 only two has qualified those ones we are going to reopen The rest we have given them conditions. I don't think they can meet those conditions. Wangangane kama wataweza. And we have shut down bars next to schools. We have shut down bars in the residential areas. And we have said we go back to alcohol the one we knew. Ile ilikuwa inatangazwa kwa radio zamani baada ya kazi sasa tulibadilisha ikakuwa badala ya tumesema hakuna kunywa mchana hakuna you drink from 5 pm to 11 uende kwa bibi yako kama huna ujue utaenda wapi but this drinking during the day we are saying is not acceptable because people must go to work 
How do you drink during the day? When will you work? So you drink two, three, four, five hours, go and sleep for seven hours, wake up sober and go to work. So that one, we, there is no letting off. And I can tell you, we are 80% successful. Young men are looking clean. Women are happy. They are saying the men are coming back home. They are not complaining of backaches anymore. So, Mambo Ikosawa, things are okay. One day in Kirinyaga, we lost 23 people in one village. And another 30 went blind. One village called Gagai. I was in Muranga the other day. I went to visit a mother. She had eight children, seven sons and one daughter. She showed me seven graves for her sons. She was left with her daughter. So we have decided, the president has decided, and I'm supporting him and Professor Kindiki, that we must bring sanity to the Kenyan nation. And we cannot let drugs and alcohol take over our country. So that's the only small challenge we have. Otherwise, the rest of things are going on okay. Fitina kidogo kidogo, iyo inaendelea. Mabo ya udaku. Village gossip. <laughs> Those are the only small challenges we are having in Kenya now. And they are, they are good things also. If there is no gossip with the village, that is not a village. Oh, who married the daughter? Oh, and oh, oh, who impregnated so and so and ran away? But most of the things are back on track. So I want to assure you, your country is good. It's under the able leadership of President William Ruto. There is political stability. There is economic development. The country is secure. We are respected all over the world. What remains for us to do now is to work on the diaspora. You guys work hard. Remit your money back home. Invest back home. Said as a foreign currency. We are working on a diaspora board where you can invest money and the government guarantees the safety of that money. That is all that is remaining. So, I'm here to assure you that you have got a good country. So just stay here knowing very well that when you want to come back home, pali yenu nyumbani hiko mzuri. Na tunangoja nyinyi, siku mutakuja. Lakini siyo sahi, mukaikai hapa kidogo, mfanyafanye, mtulete pesa kidogo, then we work together. So let us now have uh, a few questions. I think, do you have a microphone? Um, get a few questions. I'll answer some, peers will answer others. Owen Bayer, the leader of uh, majority in parliament, Namna Hio, wants idea. You say your name and then the question. All right. We'll, we have two microphones on, on the two sides. So if you raise your hands, the, they will attend to you. We'll start there. Niko na kaswale moja tu. Asante sana. I think I should thank you for the courage that you've given us. Uh, my name is Daniel Koech. Daniel Koech, yeah. Yes, uh, my question concerns the question of uh, agriculture. Yes. One of the issues that has been coming up is the issue of uh, fertilizer. Yes. Some of the money that we do make here, we send to our mothers, our fathers, our uncles to plant uh, uh, wherever they are going to plant. Yes. And you say that uh, we, are, we, now, we, we are now food secure. Yes. So my worry is that uh, with this uh, issue of uh, fertilizer, which I know it is being addressed, but uh, quite a number of it has uh, been distributed to farmers, 
and you said that we are now food secure, which I think is because of the uh, subsidy that you gave in the fertilizer last year. Mm. I'm worried that this coming year we might have a problem given the fact that the, some of this fertilizer that is not good has been distributed to farmers. Mm. You, and you mentioned one of the things that you are keen on is, uh, as a government is uh, the question of uh, agriculture. So yes. I don't know what you would want to say on that. Thank you. Very well. Uh -huh. I'll answer you, but I, in Guinea. Another question. Can I have like three, four, then I can answer them. Uh, thank you so much, Your Excellency. I'm Jackson Jagi from Tharakanidhi County. I'm happy to see my... My second concern. <laughs> my second concern is about uh, the council. I think uh, the High Commission will respond. Uh, Your Excellency, you have shown a good example by accompanied by the Muranga University student leader and the Poan. But in the council, I don't know if you have included students. We have students all over in Rwanda, and I would like you to take the example of uh, His Excellency and do the same. Then uh, number two is that um, we have issue, Your Excellency, we students who applied for passport back in Kenya, like me, I applied mine back in Kenya last year, September. I've been surviving with a permit. And the permit, you cannot be given a, a visa exceeding more than three months. So every time I am on my way to Kaziru for a migration for the visa. So I'm asking if it's possible you fasten the process of uh, our visa so that um, at least for us students, for it to be easy to access or acquire that visa as uh, immediate as possible. If it's possible. Do you say visa or passport? A passport, sorry, passport. Uh, passport. They do say dear Kuish Yapa. With passport, unapewa visa at one year, na year in a kusendia to settle in school. So uh, lastly, I want to uh, inquire if uh, the student still in this country from Kenya can access some is it loan or or <laughs> yes bursaries if if or you you can do something and we we are sorted we are not many of us here okay. thank you so much let me, let me answer those two questions one fertilizer the program of fertilizer subsidy has been very successful. When we came in last year, this fertilizer never used to reach the people. And we had a program that we did with the National Government Administration to register all the farmers in Kenya, and we registered over 5 million Kenyans, and we created a new voucher system where we registered all the farmers, the farm, the type of crops, the acreage, and it went very well. And when we came in, the cost of fertilizer was 7,000. We reduced it that year to 3,500. As a result, we used to produce 40 million bags of maize. We did over 66 million bags of maize. And because it was very, very successful, we reduced further to 2,500 this year and gave many suppliers. The issue of the reported fake fertilizer is a small issue because the quantity involved is negligible. You know in an exam, 
70% is A. So, we have imported over 4 million bags of fertilizer. So, only 50,000 we've got a crooked supply. Just the way you have a few people here in prison. <laughs> now, in every society, there are deviants. At Papa Kanisa, out of a hundred churches, you get one pastor who is a crook. You think I cannot condemn the entire church of Christ because of one pastor. You deal with that one pastor. So, out of the many suppliers who are given, only one, with only 50,000 bucks, brought something that is not acceptable. But if you look at the percentage, it's actually negligible. We are not saying it is right, it is very wrong, it's unacceptable. And our security and investigative agencies have swung into action, and people will go to court. But that, those 50,000 bucks cannot interfere with our food security because the percentage is little. We'll be more careful, we'll be more vigilant in future because the first phase was very successful. So the crooks came up with, because crooks always keep up with the developments. So in the next year we will do something different. But we have to keep on, we have to keep on uh, working on how to stop people being mischievous. So it's a small matter, but however small it is bad, we condemn it in the strongest terms possible, and we ask traders and business people to be patriotic on matters like fertilizer and no other matters. But it's a matter that we are dealing with, but I want to confirm it cannot interfere with our yield for this year. Already many farmers have received the right fertilizer. They are planting. The rains, by the way, are very heavy. We came, there was heavy rain everywhere in the country. And that matter will be addressed. Uh, Jage, uh, yes, you have eaten well. That is good enough. <laughs> the little that I had, the Edmepeana Kwahi sewing machines, you can negotiate with the chairman. <laughs> if he agrees, we forget about the machines, we deal with the pocket money. I don't know whether he can agree on a light, on a light uh, note. Passports delay, it's true. I want to admit, because we are an open government, that we have had a challenge with our printing machines because they were old and out of date. You know, with the cyber crime that is current internationally, we need to print passports that are security, secure, and foolproof. And we need modern equipment. And we have been having challenges with the old equipment that was very old and breaking down all the time. So there has been a delay. But I want now to assure you that uh, we have put uh, into motion a process to acquire modern equipment is ongoing and in another 45 days we'll be printing passports many of them in record time and we'll be able to clear all the backlog by the end of the year and from there there will be a lot of efficiency and uh, that is a commitment that i want to give and definitely when that happens uh, they, we will lie us with the mission they have noted so that we give the students priority so that they are able to process uh, their visas. I'm sorry our loans for help, we cannot extend them out of the country for now because what we have is not even enough for the students back home. And our assumption, probably we are wrong, is that if you are able to move from Kenya and go to another country, <laughs> somehow we have some ability and some capacity. Otherwise, you can go to Kijiji. 
Kama wana hesa tuwaka kenya na kuja mpaka hapa We ni mchuwaji kiasi So utapanga panga tu maneno na itakuwa sawa Next question <laughs> uh, My name is Peter Karanja uh, From Nakuru Actually The last one was Touching me nicely about fertilizer A beneficiary I keep receiving notification that I should go and collect. I'm here and I've sent some people to go and collect. We are planting in a week's time. Very good. So thank you very much for that. How many bags do you collect? 20. Very good. So and small job. <laughs> very good. I'm also a farmer here. I'm doing macadamia. Any macadamia you find in Rwanda, it has my, my blessing, my hand there. Very good. So anyway, what I'm <coughs> talking about here is very something sensitive because when people drink the way they are drinking in Kenya, we are losing them. Yes. I'm also a, uh, so I've lost somebody in the, in the same game. And uh, what you are doing is the very good. Though here sometimes I say I'm chairman of those who drink. But we are very responsible. <laughs> How many? How many? What is I do? In fact, we, we know we are allowed to take two and drive. The two. get a driver, maybe three. Most three beers? Three for tomorrow ones. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the MP for Chukai Gamamo clapping. But anyway, on, on a serious note, is that those people we lose are many. Personally, I've been a red crosser. I was involved in uh, road safety training. And uh, when I look at the people who are being lost in uh, drinking, I'm saddened for the statistics on our road. Mm. It's so serious. We lost students from Kenyatta University. Yes, 11 of them. And we lost some young, uh, young man from Chavakali. Mm. So it's very serious. Mm. When we look at our, the country here, Rwanda, the host, they also had similar challenges. Yes. But they have worked consistently towards road safety. For us... There's something that can be done yes. so that we improve on our road safety. Mm. It's very serious. When I was doing statistics, it's like every month is a jubo jet falling in a stadium and killing those people in the stadium. Mm. So we have a very active minister, and uh, we support what they are doing on road safety. Mm. But we need more impetus. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. It's true. It's true. We have uh, lost many people to alcohol. Um, almost every home has a story to tell. And people are quiet until we started speaking. I lost two brothers to alcohol. I lost two brothers. And there is a story every home. But people have been quiet, but now they are talking because of their awareness. And all of us are talking and owning up. Especially when I owned up as deputy president, I said, I've lost two brothers to alcohol. Many people have started speaking. And uh, it has now become a national concern. Again, I agree with you. The road accidents are too many. And significantly, most of them are drunken drivers. We have had some alcoholic kiosks on matato stages in Nairobi. The drivers are just drinking as they are waiting for the passengers to get the vehicle. When they are full, they are cold. And so that's what we are working on. But I, I agree with you. CS Kipchumba Mukomen is really on it, on the road safety. But I agree with you, we need to do a little bit more. And you say there was a challenge in this country. So let me pass it on to the CS to set a team to benchmark and find out how do they deal with the situation? What are the lessons that we can learn from?